I've got a package to open, and quite an exciting one at that, from Lancelot Shan, who has been messing with swords for probably even longer than I have. Cutting with them, practicing with them, reviewing them, sharpening them a lot more than I have. And in fact, in the mid and late 2000s, he did a lot to inspire me to get into sparring to begin with. Anyway, let's see what's inside. Ooh, fancy box too. Oh no, my arch nemesis, Styrofoam. Not gonna tease you too much. Or am I? Am I? Oh, well, maybe. Ooh. That's why it's called the Red Baron. Damn, that's a wide blade. Whew. <laughs> that is a chunky one. Hell yeah. It feels extremely light for the size. You would not believe it. That's pretty much single-handed sword territory. Even just looking at that, I can see that it wants to destroy things. It wants to separate them in ver into very neat halves. So that right there is the legendary Lancelot Sharp. <laughs> Damn. Now that's a comfortable grip. Very comfortable indeed. <laughs> this thing wants to move. The more strongly a, a blade tapers in profile, the further down you have to cut, simply because you, you're losing that much mass. Losing mass? What's that? Now doesn't that sound like an unintentional self-own right there? The guard is extremely tightly fitted. Oh, that's a nice pommel too, actually. Normally I prefer sense stopper pommels because this kind kind of limits how you can position your hand. But that doesn't matter here because you don't want to hold it that far apart anyway. Probably more like this. Yeah, that feels about right. It looks and feels imposing, right? But it's, it's really not heavy. So, awesome. Thanks again. This is awesome. Lancelot also sent me some of his targets because I can't find polypropylene pipe locally, which is what simulates bone and the newspaper gets soaked for half an hour to simulate flesh. Starting out with a forearm sized target. Now more of a combat cut with a step in and not overreaching. That'll do. That was a very steep cut. All right, now I'm gonna try a cut from a feint. All righty, this blade definitely makes it easier. And it's so large, but at the same time, it's so quick you can easily do this kind of thing. Gonna need some precision. It does seem like a pretty reasonable, cheap stand-in for bone. It's obviously not 100% realistic. Even dead bone isn't, but yeah, the way it can be cut, but it also fractures, it's pretty good. Let's see how it compares to two other swords. The only katana I currently have, which of course many people hold up as the gold standard for cutting. This one's made by Hanwei. And a shamshir made by LK Chen, which is pretty much the best single-handed cutting sword I've tested so far, or at least in the top three. This is not the best katana I've tried, but it's also far from the worst. And uh, just to show you their sharpness, the shamshir is also sharp. This here is meant to simulate an upper arm, the soaked newspaper is fairly dense, but has a decent amount of give. And uh, of course, bodies are mostly water. For the sake of comparison, I want to be as consistent as possible. So I'm going to set up in a very rigid stance, nice and stable, and really hone in. Try to keep the edge alignment as 
good as possible. All right. Didn't look too impressive, but was actually pretty good. Uh, so the cut, I don't really see anything particularly wrong with the edge alignment. Seems fairly consistent, maybe a slight deviation toward the end there. And it looks like it got almost all the way through the core. So unless there's armor involved, this would be more than enough to be debilitating in historical combat. <laughs> Definitely, once again, enough. I think this is where it happened, because it was a, a clean cut. Okay, yeah, you can see. It was a clean cut up to this point, and then it must have been scooped and then it tore more than it cut at the end. That's what knocked it over. Okay, now the same thing with the Shamshir. Right, that's a bit more messy. In fact, I'm not even really sure what happened. When cutting with a katana, I often have to remind myself to be closer because it has less reach than most longswords. This is a lot worse. Normally, I would want to be about here. But if I cut there and then follow all the way through, it hits pretty high up on the blade where it becomes narrow and just doesn't cut very well. So I need to be really close. Some of you may object to the stand falling over and might think I should weigh it down, but really, if it falls over, it's not a good cut. The main challenge here is not having the other hand to help control the edge alignment. You have to do everything with just one hand. Definitely enough to do significant damage, but not all the way, so not terribly satisfying. Okay, back to the katana. Yeah, that was significantly easier. The edge alignment was not amazing. You just tell that it helps out a little bit more because the other hand is involved. Okay, this is the thigh target, which is quite chunky, as you can tell. Oh no, I didn't get it on slow-mo. Ah. Here you can see what makes the PPR pipe realistic. So you can cut it fairly cleanly, but it also fractures. And sometimes it's a combination of both. You can see the scooping. I need to practice more, I've gotten rusty. Obviously, I don't expect to do better with one hand, but we'll see. Yeah, when my edge alignment isn't that great, even with a two-handed sword, then single-handed aggravates that. Just look at that. That's terrible. <laughs> but this kind of thing would, of course, happen in historical combat, you know, on the battlefield, or even in a duel when the adrenaline is pumping, you're not gonna get 100% flawless edge alignment unless you're really a master and have practiced a lot. Okay, let's see what the Red Baron has to say about all this. It made it much easier. Yep, that's a little better. All right, I'm gonna do the other side. I do not like this side. Oh, I say right before delivering the best cut of the day. It 
If I hadn't done the other cuts before, I could now have said, well, this is my weak side, guys. <laughs> no big deal, right? Yeah, no, uh... <laughs> Slow-mo camera is basically out of battery, so just one more quick cut. Uh, quick means bad, generally. <laughs> oh, not in this case. Yikes! Yeah, so this is why I used PEX pipe for the stand, rather than metal. Um, damn, look at that. That's a lot of material. I was convinced that these PEX pipes would not make for a good target because they are way too thick. But now I realize, hey, maybe not. I mean, they're actually not that much thicker than the PPR pipe. It's just such a weirdly large diameter, you know? But, uh, damn. Not what I intended, but it shows what a beast this sword is. <laughs> I guess I'll try one more. Hopefully I won't cut the pex pipe again. Not that it's a big deal if I do, but I'd rather not, you know? <laughs> that was nice. Oh yeah. That was perfectly clean. Look at that. It was, it was pushed out a little bit, but when you flatten it... <laughs> that's about as clean as it gets. Is this really my weak side? Hmm. This sword wrecks. 